Now, Brian, mm. media royalty about to join us. Robert Crash Craddock, who is the senior sport journalist and columnist for the Courier Mail. Now, News Corp have released the AFL and NRL Rich List of 100, the top 100. You can see the full list at rich100.com.au. Crash Craddock, welcome to the run home with Joel and Fletch. Uh, Joel and Fletch, great to talk to you, boys. So it's, uh, yes, it's created a bit of debate, the old uh, <laughs> the Rich 100, a bit of, and which is what it's designed to do, too. So who, Crash, has been the one that uh, I suppose many people are saying, holy dooly, are they that overpaid? Well, it's actually been the under, uh, Joel, with people staggered that eight Queensland State of Origin players didn't even make the list. You know, guys like, um, you know, Walsh, um, you know, Cotter, and, 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 you know, who are, you know, really well known, got in under the $600,000 mark. And um, they could easily, they will rock it up the list next year. So it's, it's a fickle thing. You know, there's back-ended contracts and there's a lot of guys this only this year that got decent contracts after years and years of toil. So it's, uh, it, it, it's, the, the list is often quite surprising. Crash, how accurate is, are these numbers? They're done, uh, Fletch, with a lot of research. Yep. You know, the boys, they, they talk to clubs, they talk to managers, not so much to players, but to, to recruiters. And, and sometimes uh, one club will, will say, oh, look, we went to 650 on that guy, but we were just beaten, just picked at the post. So uh, they're, to, to the absolute dollar, it's very hard to get it right, but they believe they're very, very close in the vicinity. And, uh, you know, it's... Um, I like the American system, Fletch, mm. where everything's public. Yeah. You know, they just published every cent and say, hey, for better or for worse, here's our numbers, you know. is What about the third-party deals? They're, they're not included, I'd imagine. No, they're not. This is okay. this is strictly contracts. Yep. And, um, you know, you, you see that uh, th- there are some that earn a lot more third-party. I mean, here's an example. Kalen Ponga is the number one player on the list. I've got no doubt he would get, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, private sponsorship because he's so popular, wonderful magnet for the club. Um, you know, he's a glamour boy and, and, and an absolute draw card for him. And so the same is, and it could change you, boy. You look at Reese Walsh. He is not on the list yeah. this year, Fletch. No. Next year, he could be the number one player. He where, could be number one. Where's uh, Paddy Carrigan? Is he underneath, he's underneath threshold as well? Yes, yeah. uh, Paddy Carrigan made his debut this year. I'll have to look up his number, but this is yeah, his look. first year on the list. And, and you know, he, he's in that sort of uh, not in the mega paid players, but in the in the in the next level down. You know, that seven hundred thousand dollar mark, which is you know, which is pretty darn good earnings if you can get it. Mm. Hey, Crash, just going back to Carlin Ponga. So, according to the NRL Rich One Hundred, um, Courier Mail, and the Daily Telegraph. The highest paid player, as you say, is Carlin Ponga. And, and just clarifying, so $1.3 million, that would be in the cap. And you, you said mm. that he had sponsorships coming out of his wazoo. What, what kind of money do you reckon he could have in total with his one point three salary? What, what sort of money would Carlin Ponga potentially be going home with? Oh, he'd, he'd be definitely getting... And, and this is sort of stuff that would be private to him, you know. Yeah. So, but, but there's a lot of... Um, uh, you know, six-figure deals out there for the right people if they can get someone like Harvey Norman on board. And, and there's also, um, there are some guys that don't chase the dollar as hard as others. Like, let's be frank, Nathan Cleary deserves to be the highest paid player in the mm. competition because he's the best player, but he takes a pay cut to play for Penrith. And, uh, you know, and he's chasing premierships. And this year, he could be a month away from his fifth successive grand final appearance. Mm. I mean, that's staggering. Just on that crash, um, so he's ranked number two, and number four is Tom Trebojevic. So he's also 1.2, so essentially equal second. What what was your take on Tom asking the club if he could sort of trim or get a haircut on his salary to accommodate other players, not unlike what Tom Brady used to do when he was playing for the Patriots? Yeah, I I loved it. I, I must admit... I met the Trebojevic brothers at a Dell M presentation during COVID when it was in Brisbane, and I was just completely so impressed by them. And I walked out of the building, and, and the guy who, uh, the journalist I was with, he, he said this to me in the car. He said, imagine that Mona Vale club having those boys on their books as a junior, what they'd bring to the club with their parents and everything like that. 
and, and, and just really good kids, you know. And, and it didn't surprise me, did it? I love when players do that because so many go the other way. You know, and, and Nathan Cleary, to his credit, a few years ago, he suggested that to Penrith, but they said no. Uh, the NRL said no because they felt that it compromised the salary cap. And I get that too. But it was a lovely th- in our in our world where everyone seems to be chasing the dollar. I've got to admit, I did uh, love Turbo's gesture. I love your gesture too for giving up News Corp, giving your money back, uh, so we could get a little bit more for doing that uh, back pay. So thank you very much for that crash. Crash, can I ask you about the AFL? How do they compare? What's the what's the top three AFL dudes getting? Yeah, well, well, Tom Lynch is top of the list at, at about one point four million or to one point five plays for Richmond. But guess what? He played four games this year and four last year. Wow. So he's earning about $400,000 a game. Fletch, that's your money. Mm. That's what you get <laughs> on, on, for Fox Sports. Do, do, yeah, they, yeah. Alone. do, they, do they have uh, third-party agreements? What's their deal? Is it similar to the league with are you allowed to have third-party agreements or 1.4, that's it? Yes. No, they, they are. But the thing is, the, the interesting thing about the AFL list was Richmond won the wooden spoon and they had three players in the top five. So they had Dustin Martin and Shea Bolton, as well as Tom Lynch, and yet they ran last. Wow. So that says, uh, one thing that says, Fletch, is simply this. When you win a series of premierships in the AFL, the pleasure comes first, then the pain comes later yeah. through back-ended contracts where you play players, to, you pay players to stay at the club. They're mm. still on big money, even though they're fading. But guys, I'd love to get your opinion on this. There's one thing I do like about the AFL, and the salary cap and the draft there is teams that go up invariably do go down. Like Richmond dominated and now they're last. Whereas in rugby league, it seems we're dominated by the same three teams every year, mm. aren't we? Mm. Penrith, the Storm, yeah. and the Roosters. Like they are anchored there. The, the, the Storm have just won their fifth minor premiership in nine years. So something to me is not quite working in the NRL. Your it's all thought? the coaching crash. It's, it's 100% the coaching. If you, if you put all the coaches in a raffle, and just spat them all out to new clubs, I guarantee you the likes of Bellamy, Robinson, Cleary, they'd all be back up the top within three years. It, it, the coaching is everything. It, it is everything. Mm. Do you agree, Fletch? Well, why isn't it in the, in the AFL? Because Crash just said they sort of... Well, I'll tell you why. Because I actually think the AFL would be harder to coach. It, it's more pinball. I watched the game the other day, and the mm. ball's bopping mm. around. It's far harder to build a, a game plan than what we can do. Right. Yeah, it's fair our, our coaches, what I'm saying is, I believe Crash, our coaches in the rugby league have far more control on outcomes than potentially the AFL coaches. Would you agree with that? Yeah, it, it, it's a good point. I hadn't thought about that. And it just and also the draft, the, NR, the mm. NRL has no draft, the AFL does. Draft, so if you go. run last, you get a good pick and that helps you up. But it's interesting, the, the quality of players, a guy asked me about an hour ago, who's the best value for money player on the NRL list, and I'll ask you two boys to have a stab. And I, mine's near the top of the list. Like, I feel that day after day, match after match, for 11 or 12 years, Daly Cherry Evans, he just plays 20 games a year at yep. about the same standard, you know? And, and what more can you ask? And mm. I know he's not a bargain buy, is he? But uh, but he'd be my pick as a bargain buy. I don't know whether you spotted any that you oh, sort yeah. of thought, oh, I like him. I've got one for sure, and that... I'll show you the page here, Brian. This is uh, through News Limited, and Errol Rich 100. Yep. Player number 37 on the yeah, list. Yeah, you got him cheap, 830. Well, I raise you, uh, Jerome Hughes, too. I think this bloke is a fantastic footballer and well unders. This is my man. The 650. Yep. Oh, yeah, Hudson yep. Young. Hudson Young. I'm going Hudson Young is my oh. value for money. Or yep. this fella here, Dylan Edwards at 640. Oh, he's a great But boy. he'll go up. But Crash, <laughs> look, I love when we chat rugby league, but I'm more interested in cricket with you because we're coming up to summer. Yes. What a summer we're mm. about to have with uh, five tests against India. How exciting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and I love the selection riddles. Like, Fletch, I'm as sure as anything can be that, that, that Steve Smith will not be open for the first test after the experiment failed, but I'm trying to pick who's going to be there. Heady. You know, will it be, will it be Travis Head? head. You know, is it, will it be someone like Mitchell Marsh? Crash, give me, know, but... give me Head any day. <laughs> I want Head and I want Usman. That's my, yeah, that's want... my gang. Yeah. Hey, Fletch, I love the relationship that you and Usman Khawaja forged when you appeared on the back page at yeah. the other end of the panel 
And it was funny. I was watching it from the other end, and I thought, these two blokes have just clicked, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, we've gelled. Well, I got him. I don't know if you knew this. I got him out twice in this studio as we're speaking. I don't know if you're aware of this either. I played Causey Shield, oh. uh, which is under 12s, and uh, got bowler of the year. So, you know, <laughs> birds of a feather flock together, really. That's, that's magnificent. Hey, Crash, that's magnificent. Can, I, can I ask you this? Um, if we did richest cricketers, is Pat Cummins... Australians, just Australians. Is Pat Cummins at the top of the list? Yes. Uh, well, he, he would be because, uh, well, Mitchell Stark got a $3 million IPL deal and would probably earn $2 million from Cricket Australia. So I've got Mitchell in at about $5 million a year. Pat Cummins is Australia's number one ranked cricketer, so there's two and a half plus two. And actually, Mitchell Stark might just have him. Ooh. And if you went all-time earnings uh, for, for cricket, I would say Shane Watson would be right up there because he earned massive money in the IPL for years after years after years. And if you said, okay, go back through history and name me your cheekiest, wealthiest, like the guy who you sort of, you go, who him wealthy, it would be a former opening batsman from Victoria called Bob Cowper, who who, who was an absolute genius, lived in Monaco and played a few tests for Australia made a fortune out of being an investor, and uh, he'd be, he could buy and sell you and me a thousand times over, Fletch. Yeah, I challenge... Well, I'll raise you Lou Zvinovich. Oh, yeah. Lou is... Yeah. Uh, he got into the scaffolding. Building game, yeah. But now he's a property developer. It's good. Or, hang on, wow. no. Stop the fight. Adam McDougal. He just sold his business for... H- half a bill. Half a bill. Oh, and yeah. And he's still got 20%. Yeah. Well, what about our man, Wes? Wes oh, Maher. Oh, yeah, sorry. Wes Maher. Uh, played a couple of games first grade for Balmain in South Sydney. Yep. $1.2 billion his yep. company's worth. Listed on the stock exchange. Yep. Uh, sold half. Yeah. But anyway, there's some good stories. I'll tell you what, there's a good uh, a good, good challenge, I reckon, Crash. I'm going to ask Brian when we go to a break. But on page 76, and we've got the Daily Telegraph in front of us. I know it's in the Courier Mail as well. But on page 76, there are 10 players in the NRL Rich 100 who are ranked at 750,000. 10 players. Mm-hmm. Uh, those players include Mo Fodawaka, John Bateman, Jerome Luai, Daniel Safidi, Matt Burton, Hamoli Olakowatu, oh, yeah. Joseph Swali'i, Isaiah Yo, Isaiah Papali'i, and Pat Carrigan. You can choose any four, Brian, for a one-year contract. Any four? Any four of those ten in the break. I want you to go through that. There's ten hang players on, on. Where, where, in where, where, the NRL Rich 100. Am, you can I'm, have any four are you, are for a one-year deal. Are you going to pick wingers? No, you can just have okay. any four of those ten who are rated at seven fifty as an exercise through the NRL I like top one hundred. when he 100. gives me quizzes, yeah. Crash. He can, I think I realise why he does this. Yeah. So I step out, <laughs> and I'm not paying attention to talking to the guests, <laughs> and so right. he can just hog you. Uh, well, it's worked. See you, Crash. Hey, Crash. Just before you go, <laughs> boys. Uh, no, yeah. cr- crash by name, <laughs> Crash by nature for some of those Queensland teams. Any any thoughts to say about what's happened Queensland rugby league this year? The Broncos. The Titans, yep. the Dolphins. What are your two bobs there? Yep. Okay. Quickly, the Broncos. I thought the the best quote I heard on the Broncos came about four weeks ago in a Matty Johns column where he said, uh, talented teams wait too long to be desperate. And they were going, when they needed seven wins out of eight, they were saying, yeah, we sh- we'll be right. We'll be yep. right. They, they, they became two rock star after last year's grand final. It was just going to happen this year. It didn't. So uh, they need a rocket and they will get it. The Cowboys are scrapping away nicely, aren't they? There's a few different versions of them. I'm, I'm still not sure which version. I kind of find them hard to tip or tip against, the Cowboys, but they're, they're there. And, and I, I really do believe the Dolphins, and, and this, this won't make any sense given he's won about seven premierships, but the two years of the Dolphins were just about Wayne Bennett's greatest achievement. I mean, when they came together, they did not have a training run last season until January, wow. and they were playing in March. Yeah. It was unbelievable. But he chose that team really beautifully on guys like the Bromwiches, uh, like the Hammer, who knew how to win, you know? And, and I just think that they're, they're set up for a, a really, really good decade ahead of them. Uh, the Titans just can't seem to get out of their own road. I, I, you know, I... Des hardened to buff a bit, and they showed promise. Next year's a big year from though with Tino back from injury. They've kept the feeder. Like it's a pretty, you know, that they, 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 it's just time for the Titans to do something. Mm-hmm. And, and I think I like the fiber he put into them, uh, uh, Hasler. 
but it just wasn't there every week. They weren't far away, but they're not there yet. Yeah, Crash, I agree with you. Get rid of the Titans. <laughs> I, agree, I, I agree with you, mate. I am 100%. Is that what you said? Sorry? Yeah. You said? <laughs> hey, uh, one thing that I should have asked you boys, and we're doing contract lists, and, and I'm sorry for gibbering on, no, we like gibbering. but you must have uh, – Who was? what was a big contract in your day? Can you remember someone at your club who signed something you thought, Ooh, what about that, eh? I like about 450. Too. Yeah, 400. Yeah. Oh, really? 400 yeah. was big. But, but – the context oh, crash. Houses were... Yeah, like th- these guys who were getting 400 at the time mm. were buying waterfronts at Cronulla and places for 500. Yeah. I mean, when Super League yeah. Super League hit and players, certain players got 500,000, I was at yeah. training with them. I went, what are you going to do with it? And one of them, former winger, uh, bought a house. It was a semi in Centennial Park. Yep. Cash. Bang. Whoosh. 500k. Because you think about this crash, these, these top dogs. It'd be worth, it'd be worth seven now, like, all day. These top players now. Yeah, right. and, and and there was... It rhymes with Luke Rickardson. <laughs> but there was players who, who, who weren't necessarily superstars no. who were getting that kind of mm. money. And crash, if you think, this is like, oh, what, 20 years ago. Um, the Ooh, top players now, if they're getting one and a half, they're not getting a waterfront at Cradola no, for one and a half. No, context. So the context is... Well, it- Boys, it's funny you mentioned Super League because uh, just, just one story on that. Super League changed the face of world cricket, even though it was rugby league. And I, t- I was there and I saw it. I was in, standing in a hotel in Barbados in the West Indies in the 1995, and there was no internet, so players would get the, the faxes sent through the back pages. And I remember three or four of the cricketers were waiting there, and sure enough, on the hotel fax, out popped a fax saying, Ricky Stewart to earn 600000 a year in Super League. Mm-hmm. I still remember a player mm-hmm. got it. He took it to the breakfast room. He showed it to his teammates, and they shook their heads in wonderment and said, it's time, boys. We've got to make a stand. We wow. are being paid peanuts. This is not good enough. So I just always remember, I can still see that, that fax coming out of the machine, falling to the floor, the player picking it up, spitting on his heel and going, and I thought... It'll be one of the great unreported stories. Yeah. The, the facts Hang on, we're getting, a through, we're getting a fax through. We're getting a fax through. Crash, you better go. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think you're going to enjoy my facts. Uh, by the way, I'll, I'll give you some breaking news too. On the 750 page, yep. um, Brian, out of his top four, he has snubbed Pat Carrigan. Yep. He has snubbed Matt Burton. Yep. But your number one was Yo. You've got Jerome got Luai. Yo, Jerome Luai, Ola Kawatu, and yeah. Suali. Because I've got other players already. I've got another no nine Carrigan, players. No Burton. Huge no. snubbing. Huge snubbing. Crash Craddock, we'd love to have you back very shortly, mate. Well done on all the intel uh, there. And we, we thank you for sharing all that with us on the run home with yeah. Joel Fletch. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure, boys. A highlight of my day. Thanks and, a lot. And See cra- you soon, eh? Crash, Bye-bye. also, congratulations yep. on – he's got the limbo record. Oh, yep. yes. At City Rollers. Has he still got it? Still got it. Well done for that. <laughs> oh, City Rollers yeah. close out. You were fantastic doing the yeah. limbo. Rich100.com.au. I don't know where to go for the limbo, <laughs> but you go there for the top 100. Good on you, Crash.